Hey, it's Paul from How to Network. Today we're going to be talking about a subject known as route summarization. Very popular subject for the CCNA exam. Um, never used to be in there, it used to be more of a CCMP topic, but if you don't already know, Cisco uh, are changing the, the content quite regularly, so stuff from the CCMP is dropping down to the CCNA. So what we're going to be talking about is route summarization. Do a gentle introduction, like what is it, um, why, why should you learn it really? Um, apart from the fact obviously it's in the CCNA exam. Network summarization, what, net, what that actually means. Uh, we're also going to be talking about how to apply it to uh, an actual network. How route summarization applies to RIP version 2 and ERGRP. I may mention two of the protocols, RIP, which is just RIP version 1, and IGRP. They're not actually in the CCNA exam anymore, but I think often it's good to have an appreciation of why these more advanced routing protocols have been developed and to overcome which limitations, or one of them was route summarization problems. Two ways to actually configure it on your network, have it done automatically by the routing protocol or manually add your own summary routes. And the other thing, and I'll put an asterisk on here, working out summary routes. I think there's a around a 90% chance in your CCNA exam you'll have to demonstrate how to work out summary routes. Now I will show you the quickest way I know how to answer the question in the exam. I'm not, I'm not going to be teaching you how to be a network designer, I'm just going to teach you how to recognise the question, work out the answer and just move on. I'm afraid often in the CCNA exam it's just about getting those marks and um, you know you can if you want to read more in more detail about route summarisation and the what's and why's and wherefores then you can come to howtonetwork.net or there's a great book um, by a guy called Jeff Doyle who's one of the original CCIEs who's written a book called TCPIP and that's a very good book on route summarization. Alright so let's pull up a diagram and start talking about the what's and why's and wherefores. Okay so we have a network here and let's say it's your network. We've got router A here and B here and this is your your network for your uh, employee employer now you've got several networks configured here and these are all in the 192 range so you've got 192, 1.6.8, 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, 4.0, 5.0 so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 routes going out now this is a, a very simplistic way to pose the question but really everything's just a variation on a the theme anyway how many routes would you like this router to advertise well at the moment if we just left everything on default configuration it would be advertising five times routes and say for example again this is just a fairly simple network uh, diagram here what if we had 50 routes, all part of this 192.168. and then anything after that. So say for example, uh, this is our situation at the moment. We've got 5 or 50 or however many routes being advertised. Well, the problem is, the first problem is you've got traffic going across your wide area network here and if it's a TCP connection which I'm sure you're familiar with every packet sent out has to receive an acknowledgement at some point. The second problem is you have to have a routing table entry for each of these networks uh, one for this one, one for this one, one for this one, one for this one, one for this one. Now this probably sounds like fairly basic stuff to you. However, um, I've, I've gone to networks that have been configured by CCMP 
MPs um, and other Cisco engineers. I've gone to a small office, uh, which could be in the middle of nowhere. It's got a, a tiny, a tiny router that's got very little memory and functionality, and it's sitting there with OSPF configured on it, and it's receiving something like 400 routes for the entire network. And the joke of it is that it's just a little router here and it's only got one connection. So no matter where the route is for and how many updates it has, it can only go out of one direction anyway. So it kind of begs the question why anyone put OSP off on there. And that particular scenario, I just put on a static route and all traffic was sent out. And all of a sudden the entire department could work at 10 times the speed they had before. All right, so let's clear off this mess at the moment and let's look at something else what if we have something like this I'll change the color sorry this router knows how to get to any network in this example and again I know it's only simplified anything that starts at 192.168 is basically attached to this net this router here so why not just send out a route that says anything that starts 192168 don't care what comes after it send to me Lord of a sudden you've got one times routing update going out and one times routing table entry Routing table entry. So I don't know about you, but that looks pretty efficient. And the whole the name of the game is to have an efficient, tightly designed and controlled network that works um, efficiently and, and makes the best use of the bandwidth. Just because these addresses are free, and again, this is a big mistake I see as well on a lot of live networks, you'd be surprised. People tend to dish out network addresses and, and without any without any thought to scalability without making it um, nice and tight for network summarization which is what this this talk is about alright so we're going to use a hypothetical network here and we're going to have routers A B and C now on this particular network we're using RIP version 1 no longer covered in the CTNA and the same thing goes for IGRP so no, no longer tested so you don't need to worry about configuring it or explaining how it works so you certainly shouldn't be and what we have here is your a typical kind of network setup we've got uh, a 172.16.1 network here <clears throat> and we've got a 172.16.2 network over here now this is what's known as a discontinuous network. What that means is we're crossing another network, a major network here and over here. So typically in a, in a network design, um, and again we're not covering the CCDA, the networks would form a harmonious numbering system which would lead to reduced routing tables um, and reduce traffic over the network. Now the problem with RIP version 2 is variable length subnet masking which we're talking about in another lecture does not recognize that so whenever a route goes out using RIP no matter if you've configured 172.16.1.0 it will summarize 172.16.0.0 now that never used to be a major problem but with the growing networks and more sophistication that we have in our modern networks if this router is using RIP which we are in this example 172.16.0.0 now this router here in the middle B is going to get a little bit confused we've only given it the functionality to understand RIP version 1 so it can't use any of the intelligent algorithms